and gentlemen, boys and girls, tonight I bring to you the world's cheapest recirculating infusion mash system rims. Okay, and this is for boiling the bag. I'm just eating a pack of crisps. Excuse me. I late. The little one's got chicken pox, and um, nothing too good. So I've got to be quiet. And quiet. Um, you basically, if you're boiling the bag brewer, and you've got yourself an electric kettle. Boiler, and then this is a very, very cheap way. We're talking about 15 quid or so um, to get the mash circulating round, setting those mash temperatures. The temperature bits a little bit expensive, extra. You, you should have probably a fermentation, you know, an STC 1000 or an ink bird already. So, we're just going to make use of that, okay? So, if you haven't got those, you have to buy those as well for the heat regulation. But certainly, I can teach you how to spin it round. Um, not quite usual. So, I'm trying to eat my mouth full. I'm very hungry. So, you don't, you need a cable tie. You're going to need a piece of tubing. Like so. PVC, bog standard tubing. PVC is fine, it doesn't have to be the world's biggest. And what you're going to do is you're going to put your temperature controller inside the end of the tube so it goes down into here and the cable's going to go around the bend and come back out here and run up through the lid back to the temperature controller and then you're going to tie it with a cable tie so sorry I've not got the temperature controller in here it's in my fermenting fridge doing its thing at the moment so I can't spare it for this video um, put this hole not here in the bucket that's just where the airlock was once put it in the middle um, I'll probably just change that in a bit and then at the other end you're going to need this, which is a very, very cheap pump. It's so cheap in fact, it just takes it, it's one of these fishing pumps, alright? And don't worry, because I've tested the heating of this, and it'll handle 80 degrees centigrade, and it'll run for 10-15 minutes without any problem. I've not tried it for longer, but I can't see having any problem. I was surprised, I didn't expect to do anything and die. It was a spare knocking around the house, um, didn't need it, so I thought, well, chuck it in the hottest water. I get a boulder kettle, chucked it in. Um, 80 degrees, and it was like, quite happy. I didn't expect that. So uh, it's going to suck it in from all the, the water basically from here, and it's going to spit it out down this tube, which is then going to go back round here, and then sit on top of the grain bed. It's going to sprinkle everywhere because in this tube, the TCC obviously, or the, your controller will stop it flowing as well as kink, and then you're going to cut little slits in here. Okay, lots of them in different degrees of varyingness to get it to spray out in all sorts of directions. Just to add to that, get another cheap bucket lid and cut out a, a little kind of thing that sits on top of the, the grain. I haven't finished that yet, it's a work in progress. But that's also going to sit on top of the grain, push that down, put that down near it, it will fire it all over the place and uh, just evenly distribute it across the grain bed. Simples, cheap simples. All these are good for 80 degrees, so don't worry about um, any chance of cancerous denaturifying. Um, one thing I forgot to mention, sorry, this is where the £10 comes in. You've only got so far a £4 um, pump. You're going to need a bucket. This is about a tenner, aren't they? You get a bucket that fits inside your boiler, and um, you cut holes in it like this. Okay, that's where your bag's going to sit. So instead of doing brewing the bag, you're going to do brewing a bag inside a bucket. And then this is going to act as a filter. So it's going to mean the water's going to come in from the top. It's going to filter through the grain bed. It's going to come out into the bottom where the, the heating element is. Um, and then that, the pump will then suck it up and put it back in through the top again, thus recirculating it. Um, so I'll show you my boiler. So I've got quite quiet tonight. A more of a sedate video. Here's my boiler, it's a buffalo boiler, it's £95 currently in Nisbet, it's the cheapest I've ever seen it actually. 40 litres, £25 to adapt it to a, a rolling boil and for the uh, tap and the um, bazooka. I've done videos on all of these things, even how to drill a hole in a bucket. That's a very riveting uh, video. Um, but yeah, I had to make one of these for 150 odd quid. Have a look at that. So you pop it in here and... Um, there you go, you've already got your water up, you dough your grain in, whatever. Um, you chuck your little, where's my little plastic didgeridoo gone? 
once your grain's dowed in, you put your little uh, thing on top of it. I'll put handles onto that as well, so I'll just get a couple more tight cable ties and just tie a little looped handle so I can pull it out at the end. But that'll sit on top of the grain bed, nice and flat. And then this will go on top. This will go on top with the little uh, heat sensor inside. Start spurting out water in all sorts of directions, and uh, uh, this bit simply goes down the side. So when you get a bucket, make sure the bucket fits nicely inside your boiler. Okay. So luckily I've got room down the side of that, so I'll just feed it down, and there we go. You don't want to touch it in the bottom, obviously, because it will burn, so uh, maybe peg it or set that in place. Plug it in, turn it on, and it will start pulling the wort that's nice and clear and filtered um, from the bottom in this boiler here. It will start sticking it in the top and filtering it down. And because you've got the filters in place, it's not going to clog up, and it can handle the temperature. And that's really different from any other one I've ever seen. Um, it's kind of different and... Uh, can't paint on that idea particularly, but that's my idea. That's just my, the bit I've added. Um, as opposed to it coming out of this tap and coming up and recircling around, we're doing it from within the boiler itself, taking it from the bottom and just putting it up to the top using such a very, very cheap and effective little pump. Now, also the joy of this, imagine at the end of this process, um, when you've finished doing your mashing and you want to start sparging it, you get a second boiler, which I have got, um, you take off the lid, okay, you turn off your pump, you leave that in, and you lift it up, and you put one of these under. This is from Ikea, the wonderful everyday. Okay, you pop that on, and you do this. Now you might recognise this, because this is kind of what the grandfather does. It's just my cheap-ass version of it. Um... You put your lid back on, you take your little didgeridoo out, off here, which squeals at you, I don't know why it does that, and you stick this pump, turn it off first, but you'd stick that into your sparge water, okay, set it to the low flow, it's got three flow rates on that, set it to low flow, and again it will just trickle in, trickle it all through the grain bed, it will start coming out the sides and out the bottom down into your boiler and that's it you're fly sparging on top of that so pretty clever eh for what is 15 quid worth of materials uh, I'll leave that with you let me know what you think if you've done it if you've made it let me know um, if you think it's a rubbish idea let me know why if you could foresee problems with it let me know um, I'm going to give it a go I've certainly tried it with water it seems fine I can't see why it wouldn't be any different with, with water so that'll be the next one for the next brew day you lot take care.